Welcome folks to this tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to show you how to use the scope to do measurements of a signal. So there are different uh, approaches uh, or methods or ways we can do to solve for the uh, measured signals. So the first thing you do is you click on auto set. So I already clicked on auto set. I, an auto set. So what I will have here is the two signals separated like this. And to measure the signals uh, accurately, you want to make sure that the signals are basically zoomed as much as possible within the screen. So I'm going to come to channel 1, and I'm going to make channel 1 to have a bigger uh, signal. So this is basically what I will have for channel 1. I will also zoom in on the time scale because I want to be able to see the signal nicely. I'll do the same thing with channel uh, 2. And now what you want to do is if you want to measure a given signal, like let's say that channel 1, I'm going to turn channel 2 off. So I'm turning channel 2 off. I'm going to make sure that channel 1, the prob of it is set properly. So I'm using here a B and C cable, which means that it is X1. That's what I have here. And then I will read the volt per division. And the volt of div per division here, I have 1 volt. So and then you want to move the position basically to make sure that it is aligned with one of the major divisions. A rule of thumb is you want to make sure that the line, the thickness of the line is in the middle of the major division as we see over here. And then I'm going to calculate the number of P, uh, divisions I have going up. So in this case I will have one, two, three, four, five. I have exactly five divisions times the volt per division which is 1 volt. So basically here I read 5 volts using my eyeball. If I want to measure the uh, time period, now the time period is going to be from this fallen edge to this fallen edge, and that will be on an entire period. I know each major division is going to be basically 2.5 microsecond. So I'm going to calculate how many major divisions I have from one end to the other one. So over here, I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 major divisions. So if you multiply 8 times 2.5, I'll get 20, 20 microsecond. So here I have 20 microsecond for one complete time period. So uh, from edge to edge, I calculated that using the eye, my eyeball, or basically using your uh, measured in term of volt per division. Now there is another technique you can do to do the measurement. You click on measure. So if you click on measure, here we can basically decide which channel we want to read and which particular measurement. So I'm going to basically come here to this button. I'm going to click on this button. And it says that which channel would I read. So I'm going to say that I'm going to read channel 1. So I'm going to keep selecting here until I get channel 1. So I got channel 1 and here I'm saying that read the peak to peak value. Right? So I can choose different values. So I can say for example I want to read the cycle RMS. I would read the RMS value of the entire thing. I will read the minimum value. I will read the maximum value. I can also read the time rise. I can read the time fall. I can read the uh, uh, the width of the uh, 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 positive half cycle, I can read the uh, width of the negative half cycle. I can basically read the frequency if I want it. I can read the time period if I want it, which is 20 micro. That is what I had earlier. So I'm going to keep it as peak to peak. So this is my peak to peak value for channel 1. I'll go back to major so when I click on major I see channel 1 here it reads peak to peak I'll come to the second button here I want to read channel 1 and I will do basically the uh, time period so I'm gonna keep doing that until I get the time period frequency so the frequency is 50 kilohertz here is my time period which is 20 microsecond so now I'm able to basically measure the uh, peak to peak value and the time period using the uh, scope. Now this technique is not, is not always going to work because in many cases the signal is going to be noisy. 
and if the signal is noisy, you need to use a different technique to measure the signals. So one of the ways to measure the signal is using a cursor. So you're going to go to the cursor here, and we, uh, when we do the cursor, when we click on the cursor, we can either measure a voltage or a current, or what we call vertical or horizontal. So here we can measure the amplitude using a cursor, and I'm going to keep it to channel 1 here. And to move the cursor, I'm going to choose, there is two lines for the cursor, the top line and the bottom line. So right now I'm choosing cursor 1, which is the top line, the top line, and this one here will basically move this top line up and down. So I'm going to use the top line to be aligned with the top edge. And then now I'm going to select the second line, which is this one. So I have to choose this cursor. So I'm going to click on the second cursor. Now it says cursor 2. And then I'm going to move cursor 2 to be aligned with the second line. And now it tells me that my measurement is roughly 5 volts, 5.04 volts. That's my delta V. Now once I measure my delta V, I can also measure the time. So now this is basically going to have two vertical cursors. Here is cursor 1, here is cursor 2. So right now I'm at cursor 2 and I can move cursor 2 back and forth. So I'm going to make cursor 2 to be at the edge of this one. And cursor 1 is already at the fallen edge of that one. So you can see that it has given us that delta T will equal to 20 micro and the frequency is 50 micro. Let's say that I want to measure half a period. So I'm going to move the second edge to go to a half a period. So I'm going to move it to the middle here. And it shows us that the delta T is 10 micro and basically that corresponds to 100 kilohertz because half the pulse width basically going to be twice the frequency. So it's going to move half a pulse at 100 kilohertz. So this is another way to do the measurement. And the cursor is important when it's going to come to measure more accurate data such as the time constant of a circuit. So if I'm going to move to channel 2, for example, this is my channel 2. I'm going to delete channel 1. Right? And here I have the response of RC time constant. So you can use your eyeball or you can use the uh, measurement basically to measure R2. But I'm going to continue on the cursor because I want to show you how I would measure my time constant. So here I will calculate, based on the cursor, I'm going to go to channel, uh, so I'm going to click on cursor, and then we're going to choose channel uh, 2, so I'm on channel 2 right now, and then before the time I'm going to do the vertical, so I'm going to basically measure the amplitude, so I will measure what's the peak to peak value uh, of my uh, of my uh, unit step response of the RC system. So I moved cursor 1, now I'm going to move cursor 2, and now I'm measuring the beak to beak. So when I measure the beak to beak, I have roughly around 4.84 uh, uh, volts. This is my delta V. So now I have to calculate what's my uh, 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 time constant going to be. So we know that when you going to do time constant, the result going to basically be 63% uh, uh, of the big to big value. So I'm going to bring my calculator and uh, so here is my calculator. So I'm going to use my calculator and I'm going to basically calculate what's the 63.2% of the uh, uh, 4.84 so we're going to say that I will have 0.632 times 4.84 and I have about 3.05 volts so I'm going to basically determine how long will it take to measure 3.06 uh, uh, volts so I'm going to zoom in in the time axis and I'm going to move the cursor 1 until I hit 
three point it's around here more or less that's exactly what it should be and now I'm gonna change it to the time rise so I'm gonna move this cursor until I hit that amplitude and basically this is my uh, uh, time constant it's about the delta T is about 800 nano more or less right so you can even make it more accurate by zooming in the more you zoom in to your bulls the more accurate you're going to have your data yeah so i would say it's about here you know let's say that it's about 810 nano or 800 nano so this is my time constant which is the 63.2 percent of the time rise so when you measure your signals using oscilloscope uh, uh, our oscilloscope that we have in the lab over here you can use your eyeball you can use the measurement uh, key button which is what we have here or you can use the uh, cursor so for more accurate readings such as the time constant of RC circuit or the time rise of a rising edge or the time fall of a fallen edge I would recommend you to use the cursor and then you need to zoom in as much as possible and you need to do the calibration and this way you will be able to measure your signal more accurately using the cursor so uh, and if the signal is a clean and you are only interested in the uh, rough measurement of your signals I would do measure or basically I will click on the auto set first and once you click on the auto set then you will have a nice signal then I'll do major and measurements will show you what's the major signals are to get more accurate readings I would increase or zoom in my signal to get a better reading of what I have and basically this will give us a better reading of what's the big to big values for channel one and if you want to do for channel two you can do the same thing basically you want to include channel 2 in your signal you want to make sure that it's max peaked something like this and then when you click on measurement you can select channel 2 for example to measure the peak to peak and now we can have channel 1 peak to peak to be 5.24 channel 2 peak to peak using 4 0.95 or basically 5 volts and uh, if you wanted to use the cursor which is more accurate reading you can do the cursor you select the channel if you're going to measure channel 2 and you select the type whether it is amplitude or time and you can do basically move the cursor using this knob and you will be able to get the measurement so those are the three common techniques we can have sometimes if the signal is noisy which is not the case here but if the signal is noisy you can go to acquire and you can select average and the average basically will clean out the noise so you can basically determine how much average you're gonna have so here you're gonna have the average of four samples this one will give you the average of 16 samples this will give you the average of 64 samples this will give you the average of 128 samples and so on so basically those are the averages and the average is basically used to remove noise so you go to acquire and then average or if you want to sample it in real time you just do basically give me the uh, sample value and you can see that the line here is a little bit thicker on the sampled value because you have a small noise added to it if you're gonna do average you can see that it cleans that noise right cleans that noise uh, so 
uh, those are basically the most important things that you need to know. Another thing is if you wanted to do AC and DC coupler, so here we said that DC coupler basically you're going to measure AC and DC signal. You can do AC. The AC will remove the DC offset. So if you do AC coupling, will remove the DC offset. This is going to be ground now, so you kill the signal, right? So let me do auto set again. So those are the signals that we have. So I'm going to come to channel 2, for example, it's AC coupling. I can make it a ground, and then I can make it DC coupling. The DC coupling is basically to add the AC and the DC signal together. Uh, the AC coupling will factor out or filter out the DC offset. You're basically going to have AC signal, and this is your ground. So you can see that the reference ground is basically connected to this particular arrow. Thank you for attending this tutorial. I hope this will help you. You need those uh, techniques on how to do measurements to carry out the experiments uh, of our labs, especially uh, the basic circuit labs and the electronic labs that we cover here. So I wish you all the best in your assignments, and uh, good luck to you. Thanks.